Tested by White. Miscommunication and Tigers win! And they're going to send around Allen. Is it going to be an inside to Parker? Yes, it is. Of course, to the three-point line. Thornton underneath the Van Zandt. Layup at the buzzer. It's good. It's good. Washita storms the court. Hello and welcome to this special playoff edition of the Captain Henderson House pregame show on OSDN. I'm Chase Hartzell, joined by Chris Gay. And Chris, it's going to be an exciting atmosphere today at Cliff Harris Stadium. First postseason game since 2019 for the Tigers at home. Yeah, and the first time we ever get to see Northwest Missouri State. And, you know, obviously it's been since 2019 since Washita has been in the playoffs. And you can feel it on campus. It's electric and you can feel it you know, at the stadium, it's just an amazing atmosphere. Tigers are looking to roll off the momentum of an instant classic win at Carpenter Haygood Stadium over the Henderson State Reddies. A battle of the ravine to remember. We've seen a lot of those in recent years, but this one especially memorable, an overtime win, 40-37. to 37. Well, and the miraculous comeback, you know, going into overtime, what, two touchdowns and like three, four minutes of play there at the very end. I mean, that's improbable, but... Not impossible because Washita got it done. And Washita will be looking to bring their A game this week again against truly one of the blue bloods of Division II football. This is a program that has really become, you know, for the, the playoffs for them has become a normalcy. In fact, it was, it's a rarity when you see the Bearcats not in the playoffs. Northwest Missouri State, this is the 18th year in a row where they've been in the playoffs. You look at those six national championship banners. They've got 31 conference championship banners to go along with. This is a team that's used to winning, and they're going to be looking to do that again on the road today. Yeah, and this is a team that has been in the playoffs, like you said, for 18 consecutive years and has led uh, the conference in championships. And, uh, but regardless, they haven't won since 2016. It's been six years since they've won a championship. So this is still, you know, kind of a new territory. You know, they're, they're – you know, and I guess you could say a bit of a cold streak, and basically they're in the same boat as Washita. Washita's had a lot of success, but really just in the last few years, so it should be really interesting to see. Well, it's going to be a fun day around Cliff Harris Stadium today. For our pregame show today, we're going, to, we're going to have a lot for you as we got to talk with some friends from around the Washita community, but also from the Northwest Missouri State football community as well. Got some great input from there, too. But it's going to be a great day around here, and we're going to get the pregame festivities underway after this break with an interview with Coach David Sharp to further break down how the D2 playoffs roll out and the whole seeding process. We'll have that interview in just a few moments on the Captain Henderson House pregame show. Hello, I'm Taylor King. I've been practicing law for over 34 years, but long before that, I learned what it takes to be a good lawyer, caring for others. You could say it's a family trait, and it's one I've passed along to my kids. If you've been involved in an accident, call 1-800-CAR-WRECK. I want to help. We want to help, to be on your side, by your side. I'm Austin King. Now, I've not been practicing law quite as long as my dad, but thanks to him, I know what it takes to be a good lawyer. I guess you could say it runs in the family. Our town, 
A place for new beginnings, stalwart pine trees, reuniting with old friends. Whether you find yourself here for a ball game, a wedding, or just to catch up with those you love, we want to invite you to be a guest on our front porch. A place to sit back and watch the world go by. A place where time seems to slow down. Our home away from home. Welcome back. Captain Henderson House, now accepting reservations. And welcome back to halftime at Bill Vining Arena. Washita leading this one 28 to 24. But here for just a few moments, we're going to move from basketball to football as we have Washita Athletic Director David Sharp here with us. Coach Sharp, thanks for joining us. Hey, glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. So this Saturday, it's going to be a fun matchup at Cliff Harris Stadium. Exciting time as the Washita Tigers host the Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State. Coach, for those who aren't as familiar with the Division II selection process, how are the teams selected and how does the seeding go? When it comes to the playoffs, yeah, you know it's uh, it's it's something that uh, you know we, you know I've been a part of since 2002 when I got involved in Division II football on the national level and I served on the national committee and uh, it's been a few changes but I know one thing that hadn't changed there's four regions, they have four super regions and and basically uh, you got about 40 plus teams in each region and, and seven teams make it to the playoffs they're selected that way. There's certain criteria and rationale that they measure each year. And, um, you know, Washita, you know, we, we're in there and, um, you know, we're in a uh, we're in a tough region. You've got uh, you've got, you know, national champions in there. You've got defending national champions. You've got a team we're playing this week that's that's got four or five national championships of perennial power. So uh, it, it'll be a, a tough task. But the the. The process is, is done regionally, and uh, we just happen to be in one of the toughest regions in the country. You mentioned the Bearcats, really one of the blue bloods of Division II football. It yeah. will be a tough matchup, but it's going to be a fun matchup for Washita yeah. at home. Yeah, they've got a great program up there. I'm, I'm uh, very familiar with them. I watched, I watched them um, win some national championships when I was on the committee. Of course, I've been at every championship game since 2002. And, um, and they have a, a, a historic head coach. He's retired now and retired, retired athletic director, a gentleman named Coach Mel Churchma. And uh, Coach Churchma will actually be at our game on Saturday watching. Um, he's a good friend of mine, good friend of Coach Knights, and uh, just a great coach. But uh, the Northwest has had a, had a super program, continue to have a super program. With a lot of respect for that institution, a lot of respect for their football team. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it should be a good matchup Saturday with the Tigers and the Bearcats. And Washita is a program that's built a lot of tradition in its own right, getting to host a playoff game yeah. in the NCAA Division II playoffs for the first time since 2019. What does that mean to the Washita Athletics program as a whole to get to host games well, like that? I just, I just think it's, it's, it's great, obviously, for Washita Athletics, but I think it's a tribute to Coach Knight, his staff, and the team, and, and where they are with that program. And, the culture that they've built down there and the consistency that they have in, in um, having teams that are making the playoffs. You know, we made it in 2019 and, you know, in 18. And, and so um, it, it's great to see it's, it's, you know, when things become the norm, that, that, that shows that you're, you're making progress. And so uh, I, I, think, I think it just means so much to the institution. The, um, you know, the, the visibility of Washita nationwide is is out there you know and it's you know it's it's always rewarding when i go to conventions or if i go across the country or if i go site rep somewhere you know i don't have to explain who washita is i don't have to i don't have to say anything they know who we are and uh, i think that's a tribute to coach knight and his staff and what we've done in the last 20 years and you mentioned coach knight an exciting honor announced for him today the all gac honors were announced and coach knight named the gac coach for the year yeah. coach of the year for the sixth time in the 11-year history of the conference, yeah. what an accomplishment! Yeah, congratulations to him. Well deserved. He, he, you know, he's very humble about it. He don't want any accolades, but I don't think that'll be the last uh, award he'll get this year in coaching. I wouldn't be surprised to see him getting some 
regional coaching recognition and maybe even some national coaching recognition. And a lot of players getting recognized today, too. Yeah, Nine different that. players yeah. receiving first-team All-American honors, and you saw a lot of offensive linemen, all of the starting offensive linemen for the Tigers, either making the first or second team all-conference. Yeah. really speaks to the strength of that unit. Yeah, and both running backs making first or second team, and, um, you know, of course, it's, it's a tribute to that offensive line and the depth that we have there and the, and the age that we have there, and so it's... Uh, yeah, congratulations to all those guys that made uh, all conference. And for Saturday, a great opportunity for Washita students and staff. I've heard when it comes to the game. Yeah, you know it's, um, you know when you when you get to the NCAA playoffs, you know it's 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 a tournament now, and in, in the NCAA, we're we're uh, we're on the hook for some some admissions, and you can't give complimentary admissions, but but uh, due to a gift, we're able we are able to. Uh, our students can get in with their ID and faculty and staff and their dependents can get in with their ID and uh, we want all the Tigers to you know all the all those folks to come out and support the Tigers it's going to be a great day for football you know it's not it's not going to be 80 degrees it's going to be about 50 uh, maybe 50 maybe a little bit under 50 it's supposed to be sunny should be a little warmer than it was last week for the Battle of the Ravine plus we're starting an hour earlier you know I like to start games at one o'clock and um, so uh, it's going to be a great day. Uh, yeah, we wanna, we're going to tailgate down there like we always do for home games. Uh, we've got such a great environment down there at Cliff Harris Stadium. And, man, this is it's hard to believe we're in our eighth year of, of games at Cliff Harris Stadium. And um, what we've created down there with, with, not only the, not only the students, but with the fans and the tailgating and just everything that goes on, it's a great environment down there. And now with the free tickets, really no excuse yeah, to no miss excuse. out on the – no excuse, on the festivities. To, no excuse not to be there. And, uh, and, <laughs> well, we got to see Chase and Coach Sharp have a great conversation there. And uh, it's always great hearing from Coach Sharp and hearing about the playoff schedule and the playoff breakdown. I know it can be very confusing. Um, to talk about, and I, and I know that Coach Sharp was able to clear up a lot of things there. Well, and Coach Sharp is a veteran as the athletic director for Washita. He's had a lot of experience, not only from the administrative side of that, but also from the coaching perspective as well. So he was able to give us some great input. But it really is crazy when you think about it because it is regionally ranked, and just the concentration of power that we see in the central ranking or in the central region for Division Two. You look at a handful of teams there ranked in the top 10. If you look at a lot of the polls, this is considered a top 10 matchup pretty much unanimously. In the AFCA poll, this is number three, Washita, taking on number eight, Northwest Missouri State. So two teams who have had excellent campaigns in 2022, two teams that are going to meet up with each other in the first round. You don't always expect to see that, but that's exactly what we've got here today, and it's going to be a great matchup. Both teams are going to be leaving it all out there on the field today. And we go to another interview now because you, Chris, got a chance to talk with Nate Olson who not only has experience with the Bearcats, he's an alum of Northwest Missouri State, but also has some experience covering the Great American Conference as a reporter with Scorebook Live. Yeah, it was great uh, hearing from, from Nate. Uh, he has a unique perspective. Uh, he, yes, he graduated at Northwest Missouri State, and he still has his loyalties uh, with them, but he's spent a lot of time in Arkansas. Really, his entire professional career has been in Arkansas covering mostly high school, Arkansas high school sports, but he's also covered a lot of the GAC. But at the same time, he still has um, a lot of knowledge about both Northwest Missouri State and the MIAA. Very knowledgeable individual indeed. And we're going to see that interview now. This is Nate Olson of Scorebook Live. I'm Chris Gay, and I'm joined here by Nate Olson, one of the most prominent voices in Arkansas sports, especially Arkansas high school sports. Interesting thing about him, he is a Bearcat alum, an alum of Northwest Missouri State. Thank you for being here, Nate. Yeah, I appreciate that introduction. I need to send you a check. That's uh, <laughs> awfully kind of you to, to call me prominent. We just cover high school sports as well as we can, and I've been here 25 years. I guess when you've been here a long time, uh, you know, people know who you are, but I, I'm, I'm glad to be in Arkansas and a proud Bearcat alum. Go Bearcat. Northwest Missouri State uh, yeah. in a big conference, the M -A or MIAA, and it's been noted that there's a distinct difference in size of schools between yeah. the Great American Conference and MIAA, but here at Washita, there's a very 
strong culture, especially around yeah. football. What is the culture like at Northwest Missouri State? Well, it's really great. And I think when you win, you see that at OBU. You know, you've got the Cliff Harris Stadium, which is on the premier venues in Division II, and, and all that stuff comes from winning. You know, when I came to school at Northwest in 93, we played at Rick and Broad Stadium. I mean, a lot of high school fields were better than it. And as they started winning championships, the new Bearcat Stadium was built. Renovations were made. It's a very, very nice facility now. And when you win, um, that also brings you know, not only fan support, but monetary support. People want to be involved. And the MIAA, you know, is, a, is an older league. So you had Pittsburgh State and Kansas. They're really good again this year. They're undefeated. But when I was growing up and coming to school, they were dominating. And so you had them. And then Northwest rose to prominence, but you've also got Missouri Western, which is Northwest big rival, Central Missouri State, and some others who have had some success. And so that league has really thrived because it's been around for decades, and there's some pretty good rivalries in it and a good fan following. So, I mean, I feel like because of Pittsburgh State, Northwest, and then some other schools that have had some success, it's made it one of the better uh, conferences. But you know, we we do a GAC report. Rex Nelson does it on our scoreboard show, and I chime in. I follow the GAC with the show, and we talk about it, and I I admire, you know, the league, and I think it's a lot better than people give it credit for. And I think OBU is real. you know, they've risen to the top there. And Coach Todd Knight, what he does a great job of is getting a lot of these Arkansas kids that are maybe borderline Division One type kids, he gets them to come to OBU and, he does that with the culture they have there, with the fan following, with the facilities. So, you know, I, I think the GAC, you know, maybe a notch or two below the MIAA, but a lot of it is just because it's it's so new. But I think with, with successful programs like OBU, Harding, Henderson State, the Arkansas teams, I think, have a lot of tradition and success of playing each other. So I, I think it's a great league, and I love to follow it. And I've been to almost every venue, I think every venue in Arkansas, my nephew played at UAM several years ago, and I enjoyed touring, going to all those places. Well, for those of uh, our audience that doesn't know North, much about Northwest Missouri State, out of Maryville, Missouri, and I did a little bit of research, and there's some traditions with Northwest Missouri State. Obviously, homecoming is big on campus when it comes to football, but there, there's one thing that I, I just want to make sure if, you know anything about this uh what is a one of the traditions that i'd seen online was uh there's a uh, the tradition of throwing the goal post into colden pond yeah. what, do you, what do you know about that well so i think when that that tradition was born the second year of mel churchmas so that would have been in 95 i think it was um so they went 0 and 11 and then the next year they went five and six his second year and they snapped a losing streak against uh, Southwest Baptist and they took the, they took the post and brought it in there and all got in there. Uh, the team did. And so uh, it's kind of been a tradition. And we had this columnist at the newspaper that nobody ever knew who it was. It's was supposed to be anonymous. And the person that was chosen was always a little snarky, you know, that kind of thing. And, that column that week when those guys went in that pond was, you know, they may never be able to have kids again because <laughs> who knows what's in that <laughs> pond. <laughs> I, you know, I, in college, I was pretty daring, and I don't know if I would have gotten in there. But, yeah, so that pond sits right next to the stadium. And so, I mean, I don't know that they brought the posts in that time, but they got in it. And so maybe after that, they, they, the students have done that with the – you know, winning the, the playoff games. I think they've done it a couple of times. Man, you know, a couple of times, too, it's snowed there during playoff semifinals. And uh, that that pond, yeah, it'd be really cold. But it it's it's really cool. That's a great tradition um, with, it, with it being right there. The campus is very beautiful. And, uh, you know, now it's colder. So, But it, a couple of weeks ago, you know, the foliage and everything there, it's, it's, it's quite, quite beautiful there. Well, and uh, you mentioned that anonymous columnist, and I believe it's called The Stroller, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think that's interesting. I had kind of forgotten that name. I'm glad, glad you brought it back to me. Yeah, and, and it whoever, you know, we weren't supposed to know who did it, and I think everybody kind of tried to figure it out, and I figured it out a couple different times, but 
The only person that was supposed to know was the managing editor. Um, but I was on staff for three years and I was pretty close to I think, getting it, pretty much figuring it out. But that was a great line. There were some great lines in that column, but that was a really good one saying that they'd be sterile, <laughs> not have children because <laughs> they got in that in that uh, in that water. Yeah, that, that's great. So on to football. Northwest Missouri State, highly yeah. successful. Now older, you know, older football program, football conference, but almost sixty percent winning percentage all yeah. time in the regular season. Yeah. Almost about sixty three percent in uh, winning percentage in the conference, and then of yeah. course thirty two conference championships, cons- four consecutive right now. And then 26 playoff appearances in the Division II, 18 consecutive. Yeah. So this is another animal that Washita is going to face, something they haven't quite seen yet. Yeah, it's a tough draw for you guys, I think. And, and I'm saying this is not just a, you know, a Northwest alum, but somebody that follows college football and follows the GAC you know, with Rex on Friday night. I mean, they're 9-2. But they play in a really tough league, and I've probably seen a little more competition than OBU has. And I think whenever you are playing, you know, a team like that, it's it's tough because they expect to win. They expect to win. They expect to come down here and win the ball game. And that that tradition came from Mel Churchma, who took over my sophomore year of college and made, turned them into a juggernaut, and then handed it off to Adam Doral, who was one of my classmates that played on the national championship team on the offensive line. Now Rich Wright is taking over and Rich has been a part of the, the Bearcat program as an assistant. And so it's all just trickled down and that's, that's made that program to where, you know, there's high expectations. And when they recruit kids, they're recruiting kids that are championship caliber kids. They expect to win the championship in the conference, they expect to go deep in the playoffs. And I, I think when you have that attitude, you're really hard to beat. And and so I, I mean, I think that's, that's going to be a tough task for OBU. I think being at home is a, is a big help for them. And uh, you know, they're, they, I think we get a little disrespect. Both schools do having to play at Grand Valley if they win. So I, if I was coach Todd Knight, I'd be drumming that a little bit about, you know, the kind of disrespect and a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, but, think it'll be a good game but yeah you're, you're right about the tradition I mean there's there's really nobody else that has that right now in division two and if you'd have told me that when I was a freshman in college there I wouldn't have believed it because it was so bad and I remember a lot of kids wouldn't go to the games but I, I went to every one of the games even though in 11 year went to almost all those games and because I just like being there but it, it's a remarkable remarkable turnaround to where they are now well, and the tradition for the Bearcats is so rich, but so it so is it for uh, Washita, six mm-hmm. conference championships and five playoff appearances. So not as many, not nearly as many as the six-time yeah. national champ, the Bearcats, but the success has really come of late. And, yeah. you know, in addition to the great uh, culture here at Washita, you have the Battle of the Ravine, which... Yeah. For those that are familiar with Arkansas sports, sure know about Battle of the Ravine. So have you ever had a chance to be here for Battle of the Ravine? I did. I, I went, uh, I think it was in uh, 2019, the fall of 2019, I believe, is when I went. And they won. It was at Cliff Harris Stadium. Um, it was. It's remarkable. I mean, it, it it is a cool, It's. I don't think it's just the best Division II rivalry. I think it's one of the best in college football. And I think that. If anybody came here just, you know, as a neutral fan, they would be impressed no matter where in the country they watch football. And and my friend, Colin McDonough, he is the SID at Northwest. I told him, I said, when you're coming up the road, look in both directions. And when you're in the press box, look across the street at Henderson. You know, you can see the game going on over there from the press box if there's two games going on at the same time. And Rex likes to, you know, sometimes if there's staggered starts, like, do the Wachita game, then run over to Henderson and watch the end of that one. It's just, it's a cool deal. I mean, and, and as a, a sports fan, as a college football fan, I'll never forget it. it. It came up on my timeline today or yesterday on Facebook when I went and to see those, the Reddies walking across the street, it's just, there's nothing like that. It's, it's really awesome. And I think, 
I think you do have a great culture there. And, and I, I really respect Todd Knight. I've talked to him numerous times throughout my career. I think what he does a great job of doing is taking the, the kids that, you know, are, are uh, borderline division one. And then, you know, I bring them to watch a talk and they have a lot of talent. I mean, that's, that's, and I, it's cool to see kids that you saw in high school, them playing at OBU. So he's, he's done an awesome job. And I think he's, he's risen them to, you know, one of the premier programs in division two. And now you guys just need to win a playoff game and make a little bit of a run. And and if you do that, that's what Northwest did. You know, you got in the playoffs, won a game, then they won championships. If OBU can do that, they're going to have a national reputation. Thank you, Chris, for that great interview. It's always great to have people like Nate Olson around to really kind of bridge the gap between the Great American Conference as well as the MIAA. You know, not a lot of people have experience in both areas, but he's one of those rare individuals who does, and he really does give our fan base here a better feel for what Northwest Missouri football, Missouri State football is all about. Yeah, and one of the things I wanted to talk with him about was we know here at Washita we have such a rich tradition, and it's you know especially behind like Battle uh, Battle of the Ravine. But we don't know much about Northwestern Missouri State. I mean, this is the first time we've ever seen them before in a game. So getting to hear about the culture of the Bearcats was really great to see. Well, now we get to hear from OSDN's Isaac Bourne, who got to talk about the X's and O's of Northwest Missouri State football with Matt Daniel of the Bleeding Green Podcast, who covers all Northwest Missouri State football. So we'll be back right after this break for more of the Captain Henderson House pregame show. All right, welcome back. to. Uh, we are, I'm here with uh, Matt Daniels here and from the Bleeding Green Podcast. And uh, today, you know, would you explain kind of like what your podcast is about for any uh, Northwest Missouri State fans watching right now? Yeah, sure. I, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. So uh, if you search Bleeding Green, po- just Bleeding Green on, on Spotify or wherever you can download podcasts, it should come up. I also have a website, bleedinggreenpodcast.com, that folks can go check that out. It shows you all the all the different places. And it's I, I'm just a fan. You know, I have, a, I have a background in broadcasting. I used to work in radio. Now I'm just a, a dad of three with, uh, you know, with a kind of a crazy normal life. I work from home, so that allows me some flexibility to be able to do this but it's really kind of from a fan's perspective so i had uh, rex nelson on this week we always get somebody from from the opposing team and and then we always have a player interview i have something i like to call the pick six just kind of six goofy questions at the end and uh, so we'll talk to players local media um, media from the other team and and then i have my 11 year old son eli has a segment where we do predictions and things and he gives me a hard time so it's it's a lot of fun i you know it's it's definitely a project of passion for sure um, but I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I, I love it and that's why I do it. And I, and I certainly appreciate you guys having me on. Yes, sir. I, I totally get that. So, um, let's kind of get into the game this weekend and talk about, you know, what you expect from both sides of the, of the game. Well, sure. I mean, I, I think this is, this is a good game. Um, you know, I think, you know, you, you've kind of got the running game of the Tigers versus, the tough defense of the Bearcats. I think that's probably what everybody would say is the identity of the two teams. That's definitely the identity of this Bearcat team and, and a rich right coach team will always have that identity. We're always going to be a strong defensive team. He, he also uh, coaches the the defensive line. That's, that's a position he coaches. He's, he's uh, shares defensive coordinator duties. And so, you know, the Bearcats are just kind of a tough, hard nosed team. And this isn't you know, obviously we have the tradition and the tradition in the playoffs and everything. This isn't your traditionally, um, you know, strong Bearcat offensive team. They've been really clutch at times, but, but this team's just really gritty and tough. They've had to win different ways all season long. They had a couple early losses and, and it's been kind of five weeks in a row of, of basically playoff football. And they've known that. But if you go back to the Washburn win, I mean, that was a, a you know, the defense gives up a touchdown with 30 some seconds left and the offense has to make a couple of plays, gets in field goal range. And, and, uh, our kicker Cole Lamel had a really rough season last year's had a great year. He was third team, um, all conference this year when that came out earlier this week. And is it has been a great year for him. He kicks the game winning field goal in that game. You go to last week where we played one of the top offensive teams in the country and in Emporia state. And it was, it was kind of the opposite of that. It was the defense that really had to make some plays down the line. And there were I tweeted out a stat earlier this week 
Uh, Emporia had five possessions at midfield or in Bearcat territory. They didn't score on any of them. And so including the last two drives of the game, a turnover on downs and an interception um, by the first team all conference, Khalil Smith, our corner, who who had just given up a big play earlier in the fourth quarter. So that was kind of great for him. But but as far as what the Bearcats want to do, the Bearcats kind of like the Tigers, they want to run the football. Um, we can throw the football. Uh, you know, quarterback is going to be – Mikey Hohensee is going to probably start the game. Braden Wright, who's a senior, is going to come in and, and play. And they have a little bit different skill sets, but they're both athletic. They can both run. Both have had 300-yard passing games this season. Uh, Mikey's had two of them, and Braden's had one. Um, but the the guy is is kind of the bell cow for this Bearcat offense is is number 22. He's a true freshman, Jay Harris. And he's kind of they they burned his red shirt a few games into the season, and he just kind of every week he gets a little bit more and more carries. He's just a really big physical back. Um, I, I can't overstate the the uh, the fact that he's a re- that he's a true freshman. Um, that just doesn't happen at Northwest. Here for the last 25 to 30 years, we've kind of had a tradition of guys come in, we red shirt them. Um, and then, you know, maybe they see the field a little bit as a redshirt freshman or a sophomore and then, you know, kind of start later. He came in, they, um, you know, they took his red shirt off. He's, he's, he does not play like an 18 year old kid. He plays like a, like a much older man. He's a big physical back. Jamar Moya leads the team in receptions and rushing. He's a really good, he was a first team all conference kind of all purpose back. And so, um, but I mean, don't get me wrong. The strength of this team is definitely the defense and the front seven, the, the back four is kind of. Um, been burned at different times, although they really stepped up, probably played their best game last week. Yeah, that's what I've seen when I look at, at this team. The Bearcat defense, specifically that front line, is just very powerful. You've got Jake, uh, Elijah Green, Zach Howard, uh, th- those two guys alone averaging, what is it, 20 sacks on the season, or have 20 sacks on the season? Yeah, and, and Zach is a guy. It's funny because Zach is an All-American last year. He's kind of the guy that gets all of the attention, and and you know he's got the size. You look at him, okay, you know he's a big guy. You look at Elijah. He's a guy that's five eleven. He came in as a linebacker. He's a Maryville kid. Great story, and he's a spectacular young man, as so many are on this team. But he he is kind of really he worked on his pass rushing a lot in the off season. He he led the MIAA in sacks and tackles for loss. In fact, he was the conference defensive player of the year. Both him and Zach are first team. And another guy to watch is number 95. He's a defensive end, Jake Fisher. He's a young guy, and he has a few sacks this season. But there are times when he is just absolutely destroyed at the tackle going against them. So he's kind of a fun guy to watch. But there's a lot of guys that rotate in. Again, that's that's kind of Coach Wright's baby is that D-line. And, you know, that's the strength. They they really free up the linebackers to fly around. Um, all three are, are – or uh, a really great Isaac Volstead in the middle is a guy that covers a tremendous amount of ground with his speed and uh, Sam Phillips, uh, another guy who's, who's, you know, an all conference type of player and, and been a great linebacker. His brother was an, was an all conference defensive player of the year, several years ago at Northwest. And Andrew Dumas is a guy who's kind of made that other linebacker spot his, and he's had a great game last week. Again, all, you know, the, the D line takes up space and lets those linebackers fly around and, and do what they do. Yes. So um, we have I know you guys experienced the selection show this past week and, uh, you know, going in, you didn't know if you were going to fully get in. So, you know, what was that feeling of continuing that 18th consecutive uh, playoff uh, appearance this year? And, uh, you know, how did it feel to know you guys got in? Well, it was really great. Um, You know, I. I had a feeling, and, and a lot of us were watching your guys' game on Saturday, really rooting for you because we knew if Henderson State won, they probably get that last playoff spot. And so, you know, the, the Bearcats have, have been kind of lower. They needed some things to happen, and and I think everyone was was kind of satisfied with they gave it their all, got the big win in Emporia. But but it was still I would I was said I was about 60% sure on Saturday. By the time Sunday rolled around, I think I was maybe 75% sure that we were going to get in, but I wasn't sure, and I wasn't sure where we were going to play. And, um, you know, so, so yeah, I mean, it's great. Listen, we're incredibly spoiled as Bearcat fans. I'm I'm approaching 40, and the last time we missed the playoffs was 2003 when I was a sophomore <laughs> in Northwest. So we're we're incredibly spoiled, but, but uh, you know, we're just so happy, you know, road home it, it doesn't matter we get to, and and hey I, I was kind of excited because i've never been to arkadelphia before never been to to uh to, to see a game and and uh 
with you guys and and plus traveling south this time of year is always kind of nice so well an interesting th- stat that i thought was funny is um North, Northwest Missouri State has never or has never missed the playoffs since I've been alive. Since I was born in 2004, I have every single year I've been alive, uh, Northwest Missouri State has made the playoffs. So I just find that as just such an interesting story and just really cool that you guys have been able to make the playoffs like so often. And, you know, go, coming from Washita's perspective, this is only our fifth time in the past eight years making the playoffs. But, um, I still feel like, you know, we still have a very formidable team this year. And, uh, like, kind of go into that. Talk about, you know, what do you see from this Washita team that may give Northwest Missouri State a little bit of a run for their money? Sure. No, I think this is going to be a great game. I, you know, I, I think, and I said on my podcast this week, this is a good matchup for Northwest in the fact that your guy's strength is our strength. You know, running the football, we defend the run. But but I don't think that makes – Northwest necessarily even the favorite or or a guarantee to win this game or or you know walk walk all over and you know obviously if we're going to talk about Washita uh, Baptist you know it's it's T.J. Cole I mean he's you know he's the guy that everybody talks about and and I'll be honest I've kind of watched you guys pretty closely this year I played in the D2Football.com uh, fantasy football league this year and he and T.J. was my first round pick and so uh, he carried me to a third place finish. So that was great. So I was always checking your guys box scores. I mean, we know about Kendall Givens and what he can do almost ran for a thousand yards himself. And, uh, and, and Riley harms the quarterback, you know, a guy from who, who played in the MIAA for a while was behind TJ Davis at Nebraska Kearney. So we, we definitely know about him. And that was the thing that kind of struck me last week was how well, um, you know, Washita ran the two minute drill and especially to get back in that game and come late, you know, I kind of was like, wow, you know, cause I, I think, I think you're, you know, the Tigers are going to have to throw the football to move the ball against the Bearcats. Not that I'm saying won't necessarily be able to run the football, but it's going to be tough, certainly. Um, but to me, the the big match, and and that's fun, right? That's fun in the playoffs. You get, you know, strength on strength. That's the way that it's supposed to be. I think this will be, you know, both teams want to run the football. But the thing that I look at is the Bearcat offense against the Tiger defense because. The ability of, of Washita to force turnovers and turnovers have been a weak point of the Bearcats. Now, the Bearcats did force three last week, um, although we had two ourselves. And so, you know, kind of throughout the year, we've always been on the negative side of that. I think that's the big key to this game to me is is the turnover battle is, you know, if if, uh, you know, the Bearcats or whichever team is on the negative side of turnovers is probably the team that loses the game. I think it's a you know, it's it's very thin margins of course when you're in the playoffs and and uh, so so although you know yes you know I think I think Bearcat fans in general I'm a fan you know that's my perspective I think Bearcat fans in general are like this matchup but I don't think anybody thinks this is going to be a walk in the park or anything like that we have a ton of respect I personally have a ton of respect um, for Washita Baptist and I'm just really excited to see I th- think what's going to be a great game on Saturday Yes, sir. I uh, totally get that. So you were talking about T.J. Cole being, you know, such an electric running back, but at the same time, you guys also have Jamar Moya and his all-purpose capabilities. So what do you see from him? What do you think? What do you expect to see from him this weekend? Especially since you know he's got so many rushing yards, but also a bunch of he's third on the team in receiving yards this season as well. So, you know, Jamar Moya can just basically is a kind of a jack of all trades for you guys. Yeah, I think he's got like 23 more receptions than the, than the than the number two guy on the team. He is. I think um, we didn't see as much of him last week. I you know I I don't really know whether it was an injury or what it was, but he definitely brings something different. He's a little guy, so looking at him, um, you know, if if you're if if you haven't seen the Bearcats play and and you know you're kind of looking at him, he, he's a little guy. I think maybe he's 180 pounds, but he also is a tough runner between the tackles. He will punish guys just as much as he gets punished. He can really run over people. He's he's kind of dynamic in space and and uh, you know, but but the last you know two three four weeks, I mean, Jay Harris is that the true freshman that I mentioned earlier has really gotten more. Um, he's a guy that I, you know I kind of joke. Um, on game day, he just kind of falls forward for a yard. So if it's if it's third in the yard, fourth and in inches, something like that, most likely you're going to see number 22 back there carrying the football. But we have other good backs too. A really cool story is Robert Rowie. He was a guy that that kind of started to get you know uh, at least half of the carries early in the season. Had a really bad shoulder injury. We thought his career was over with. He came and he had a carry last week. He, he was dressed out. So that's that's a cool story. I don't know how much he'll figure in, 
but I had to mention him, give him some love. Jaden Brady's a guy who who is a, is a good kick returner for the Cats. He's had, I think, the longest rush by a non-quarterback this season of 52 yards a couple of weeks ago that kind of broke the Missouri Southern game open early in the second half. And and he's a guy, he's a he's a great receiver out of the backfield. He won't see that in the in the box score very much, but he can definitely catch the ball. And really, all these running backs are, uh, you know, the, there's several you might see. Tank Young's the guy we've seen get carries throughout the year. And so... Um, a really dynamic player you watch out for who's gotten a lot of attention. He hasn't really, um, you know, flown off the stat sheet the last few weeks is, is Kashawn Griffin. He's a, a junior college transfer, which again, you know, Northwest is just one of those teams where, you know, to see junior college guys come in or, or true freshmen play, you just don't always see that a lot. And so, you know, those guys got to be, have to be pretty good. And so, uh, KG as they call him, Kashawn Griffin, he's, he's electric for, there's a p- portion of the season. He was leading the nation in punt return yardage. He's, he's a guy who has blazing speed and I think they probably want to get the ball to him in space, I think. And he can really make some special things happen. Yes, sir. Uh, I definitely see on both sides of the ball, uh, two teams that match up just really well against each other. It's going to be a fun matchup this Saturday. I, I'm excited to be at the game, and um, hopefully we'll see you there, right? Yep, I will definitely be there. I'm bringing the family, and so so we'll be uh, we'll be up in the stands rooting for our Bearcats. But yeah, if anybody, Washita fans, whoever Bearcat fans want to come say hi, definitely, I'd we'd uh, get a thrill out of that. Yes, sir. Well, uh, thank you for thank you for being on today, and um, thank you guys for watching uh, OSDN, and please stay tuned. Thank you, Isaac, for that interview. Matt had some great insight on Northwest Missouri State football. And we're gonna provide a little bit more insight into today's matchup now, Chris, as this is one that everyone's been looking forward to. You saw that lineup, or that matchup really, when it was first announced for the lineup of the D2 playoffs, and you saw that and you were like, okay, these are two of the, really the top two teams in the classification facing off against each other. Really, the crowd's gonna get, are gonna get their money's worth in the first round here. Yeah, and these are two teams that are actually pretty similar in the, the way they play. Uh, one, you know, both teams are very strong running teams, and then every once in a while they'll step back and, and try to pass it, and they're pretty efficient you know, the, in the passing game. Uh, but one thing worth noting is that uh, Washita has the unanimous first team all GAC selection in TJ Cole and over 1,600 rushing yards, and that is definitely uh, a lot more than any running back for the Bearcats, but the Bearcats have multiple rushers that are well over 200 yards, so it should be really interesting to see who can have the most success in the run game. And also Kendall Givens right there in the second team all of GAC. You don't see that too often where you see two different running backs in the top two teams in the conference, but that's exactly what happened for the Tigers this year. Nine selections for the first team all GAC, and when you look at those first two units, the entire starting lineup for the offensive line for Washita is either first team or second team all GAC Really a talented group, but they're going to have their work cut out for them this week against a staunch defensive line for the Bearcats, and that's going to be headed up by the MIAA Defensive Player of the Year, Elijah Green. I mean, you're not kidding. That guy's a beast. Uh, 11 and a half sacks, 21 tackles for a loss. This is a run defense that's only allowed 600 rushing, or uh, just a little bit over 600 rushing yards on the season versus – They've had almost 2,000 rushing yards on the season as a team. So uh, I imagine the game plan will not be any different. Washita is still kind of try to run them out and try to tire out that defense. And then if that doesn't work, then they're going to use Riley Harms and they're going to see what they can do with guys like Connor Flanagan, Justin Dean. Yes, and really another interesting thing to note with Green and his accomplishment is that we've talked about the somewhat of a dynasty that you see there at Northwest Missouri State just all around. But how about the defensive line dynasty? Three straight years in a row where the defensive player of the year for the MIAA has come from the defensive line position at Northwest Missouri State. It's rare when you see that back-to-back. It's extremely rare when you see it three times in a row. There's a lot of talent at that position for the Bearcats. Yeah, and they've won that award about a dozen times since like the late 90s and that again is very unusual to see you don't even see that with a lot of division one programs let alone division two but it's a testament to how successful they have been on defense it doesn't matter the defensive line just overall that defense has been great and not only you know is their line great they have two linebackers that are also all con- all conference second team 
and then they have a member of their secondary that is uh, all-conference uh, honorable mention. So they're a very deep defense. They have a lot of ball players in all three levels of that defense, and it's going to give Washita some headaches. But like we said, they got some players too on offense. And you touched on that just a little bit. We've talked about the defense for Northwest Missouri State. Let's talk about the defense for Washita. Who are going to be some of the standout guys in this one, and what's really going to be the key to success defensively for the Tigers? Well, guys like Jax Miller, Dawson Miller, are going to be great in that linebacker core, Ty Compton. Uh, and, uh, of course, this is a team they do like to pass. They, they don't pass, you know, that much, but about the same amount as Washita. And guys like Anthony Freeman and uh, even guys like Chance Taylor, they're going to have, a, you know, their chances to uh, – you know, add on some sacks, and it's going to be really interesting to see what the defensive line can do as far as applying pressure, which they've done pretty well at all season long. And at this point in the year, you really have to throw records out the window because everybody's good at this point. But this is one of the more balanced matchups you're going to see across D2 all year long. It's going to be a great atmosphere today at Cliff Harris Stadium. We're gl glad to have a great crowd out here today, as well as at home watching with us today. And in just a few moments, we're going to have the opening kickoff of the ball game. And thank you to all of our reporters and for my colleague Chris. This is Chase Hartzell signing off for the Captain Henderson House pregame show. Washita football is on its way in just a few moments. I'm Nicole Auerbach from The Athletic. Hey, this is Alex Pruitt with Sports Illustrated Magazine. This is Kevin Kugler of Westwood One. Hi, everybody. It's Pete Kranick of the Memphis Grizzlies and Fox Sports Southeast. This is Danielle Musselman. This is Kyle Peterson with ESPN. This is Tom Hart of ESPN and the SEC Network. Thanks for tuning in to the Washington Sports Digital Network.